Hi, everyone. Hello. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Hi, Jackie. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, good evening, Kevin. Hi, good evening, everyone. Hi, Evelyn. Welcome. Everyone. I'm sorry. Don't worry. We understand. We got you. We are sleepy. All of us, we're sleepy. All right, everyone, welcome back to your English class. It's a pleasure to see you, yo. I hope, as per usual, that you're safe and sound. Today is Thursday, May 4th, 2023. All right, so let's check. We are officially in class 11, so welcome. Uh, we're still working on section four, whose genes are these? We are beginners one. Okay, so let's check. Let me share with you the following slide. Do you remember? Mention at least three vocabulary words related to clothes. You might remember as well that yesterday we were working on that topic, all right? De seguro recuerdan que ayer estuvimos trabajando en ese tema. So let's check. Uh, do I have a volunteer? Tengo algún voluntario. Para que responda solamente la uno. Only one, not two, nor three. Okay, perfect. Manuel, tell me three vocabulary words related to clothes. Blouse, tie, belt. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Campos. Danny, Danny, tell me another three, please. Uh, smartwatch, um, shoes, sneakers. Okay, perfect. Thank you. That's correct. We might differentiate both, all right? From shoes to sneakers, they are different, thank you. Number two, mention at least three colors that you learned last class. So do I have a volunteer? Okay, we don't, let me ask uh, Kevin Alexander. Kevin, tell me three colors that we learned in yesterday's class. Red, dark green, Light blue. Perfect, perfect. Thank you. What about Lisette? Lisette, tell me another three colors that you learned last class. Uh, purple, uh, yellow, and green. That's correct. Thank you so much. Very good. And the last one, three possessive adjectives that you remember. Let me ask Jackie. Jackie, tell me three possessive adjectives that you remember. My, your hair. Very good. Thank you. Now, let's see. Yesterday, we were practicing with this vocabulary, right? And also, we saw this chart. Remember, what's the difference uh, of possessive adjectives and possessive pronouns? Today, we're going to see what is the grammatical difference. Este día vamos a ver cuál es la diferencia gramatical que tienen ambos, all right? Los possessive adjectives y los possessive pronouns. Sin embargo, eh, sí quiero que visualmente me puedan decir cuál es la diferencia que estos dos possessives tienen. Do I have a volunteer? Que levante la mano virtual el que quiere participar. Hay una diferencia visual y no es el color, ¿verdad? Visual y en la escritura. Llevan adicionada la S. Which ones, Manuel? ¿Cuáles llevan la S? The pronouns. Possessive pronouns. All right. Possessive, possessive pronouns. Yes, perfect. Thank you. That's correct. The difference, the visual difference that we have is that possessive pronouns have the S at the end of the noun. Right? Very good. Excellent. Thank you. Now, we may start looking at the grammatical part. Vamos a iniciar a ver ya la parte gramatical. Okay, so we use possessive adjectives when the object is 
at the end of the sentence. Cuando hablamos de object, no nos referimos exactamente a un objeto, right? Puede ser, eh, puede ser cualquier otro noun, right? Uh, we usually use objects with possessive adjectives. Usualmente eh, utilizamos objetos con los possessive adjectives porque a veces, porque en realidad no es que poseamos a las personas, right? Por eso no es muy común hacer ejemplos con personas. Pero eh, lo que siempre sí es bien común y es usual hacer es hacer ejemplos con objetos, right? Por eso la información dice, we use possessive adjectives when the object is at the end of the sentence. Si el objeto va al final de la oración, ahí es cuando aprovechamos de utilizar possessive adjectives. So let's check how do we use them. Guiding example. Ok, voy a pedirle a... Mario Molina, can you help me with the guiding examples, please? One, two, and three. Ok. These are your cups. This is your computer. Those are his documents. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. He puesto en colores el objeto. Cups son tazas. All right? Cups. Uh, computer, computadora. Documents, documentos. Hablamos de registro o otras cosas que entran en el, en el tema de documentos. All right? He utilizado demonstratives. Los demonstratives ya los vieron ustedes. Creo que en el nivel uno los ven. This and that. All right? Y yo les mencionaba también, bueno, Creo que este, este nivel fue que lo vieron. Que existe el dos. Ustedes vieron, perdón, el this y el des. En este nivel lo vieron hace dos semanas. Vieron el this y el des. Pero no vieron el dos ni el that. Yo les explicaba que el dos era para decir aquellos. All right? En plural. Cuando los objetos estaban lejos de nosotros. Cuando se utiliza that. I'm sorry. When you use that es porque... Just one object and it's near you, okay? Let's copy this information on your notebooks, please. Copiemos esta información en su cuaderno porque esto no está redactado así en la platform. Pero yo se lo quería poner literalmente como es. All right? So when do we use possessive adjectives? Um, let me check. Gen Z, when do we use possessive adjectives? Well, well, when I need to explain that uh, that that object pertinence belongs. Yes, belongs. All right. Pero como dice la información, when the object is, we use possessive the adjective when okay. the object is at the end of the sentences. Very good, yes, which is related to what you mentioned, right? Que está relacionado con lo que usted mencionó. Son dos cosas importantes que tenemos que ver para el uso del possessive adjective. La primordial es que el object tiene que ir al final de la oración, right? Y esto es para todos. Y la secundaria es que estamos dando a entender que el objeto nos pertenece. The object belongs to us, right? Perfect. Uh, yes? Miss, uh, I'm trying to understand that... Uh... Relative you say, why not I can use the positive attitude with the persons? Uh, oh, for, yes. exa for example, I can say, this is my daughter. Yes, but uh, we're talking about relatives. I'm not talking about general people. For example, I cannot, um, we usually use my, most likely is the one that we are using, my. To say that something belongs to us. But I discard it. Yeah, it's correct. It's just not that use. A lo que me refería es que no es tan usual. All right? What is the usual? Huh? What is the usual? For example. The use, the use is the normal when you are talking about the object. Mm. But also you can use it with people. I don't know if you get my point, Gen Z. Or should I explain in another way? No, I I, I had a, I only have a duda. All right. 
You have the doubt. Okay. Yes. Let me explain you this. You might use it with people. Si lo usamos con personas, right? Let's be honest, we use it. Cuando decimos my girlfriend, his girlfriend, um, I don't know, his cat or something else, we use it. Si lo utilizamos. But it's not that frequent. No lo hacemos tan frecuente porque sabemos que en realidad no son posesiones. No podemos poseer a las personas, right? They are with us, but we cannot possess them, right? They don't belong to us. No nos pertenecen. But you can use it. Whenever you want to, you can use it. But most likely, we use it with objects. Okay. Mm -hmm. sure. The reason is because I know Abner, the, the person. Uh -huh. Yes. And okay. once again, I will remark this. Una vez más, remarco esto. Sí lo pueden utilizar. Pero no es muy usual porque en realidad la gente no nos pertenece. Right? So, yes, you can say it. Now, uh, is it clear the use of possessive adjectives for everyone? Is it or is not? You can ask, teacher, is this the correct way as always? Or do we have another option of the placement? Una buena pregunta sería si solo lo puedo utilizar así o hay otras opciones. Porque aquí directamente me está diciendo cuando tengo el object at the end of the sentence. Is it clear? Looks like it. Let's go with the next one. We use possessive pronouns. When do we use possessive pronouns, Manuel Castro? Manuel Campos. We don't have Manuel Campos in the classroom. Okay, let's go with Salvador. Salvador, when do we use possessive sorry. pronouns? I'm sorry. Ah, there you are. It's a mute. You were muted. Okay, don't worry. That's why I, I asked twice. When I, whenever the object is at the beginning, beginning. beginning of the sentence or not mentioned at all. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Now, let's point out this. Expliquemos bien clarito esto porque aquí puede ser algo confuso, all right? Vamos a pedirle que nos lea los examples a Carlos Salvador, please. Guiding examples. <coughs> Guiding examples. Uh, these cups are yours. This computer is yours. This documents are his very good thank you oh i noticed that you are on bad mood right now sorry for that i hope you get better okay let's check it says that if you have the object at the beginning of the sentence or not mentioned at all vamos a destacar esto y a dividirlo bien clarito okay cuando dice En el inglés, mis queridos estudiantes, no todo lo podemos tomar literal. Sobre todo porque la gramática, el speaking, el reading, muchas veces se basa en el contexto. Right? And that's something you should know. Y es algo que tienen que llevar en la mente. Porque si no se van a frustrar de ver que en realidad no son las cosas literalmente. ¿Okay? Cuando dice the object is at the beginning, no significa que va a ser lo primerito que usted va a ver en la oración. Significa que va a estar dentro de los primeros dos pasos de la oración, all right? For example, cuando yo digo these cups, yo tengo una palabra antes de cups, que es mi object. Que tengo un demonstrative, all right? Pero para mí el objeto sigue estando al principio, all right? Más que todo visual con lo que tiene que ver lo que estoy explicando, right? We cannot take it literally. Then it says, or not mention at all o no se menciona. Yo fácilmente puedo decir, these cups are yours. Estas tazas son, estas tazas son tuyas. Whereas I can also say, mientras que también puedo decir, these are yours. Si la persona está viendo el objeto que yo traigo en la mano, 
no, no redundamos diciéndole, these cups are yours, this computer is yours. No, these are yours, right? This is yours, okay? That is an everyday basis. Y eso se aplica todos los días. And uh, you're talking with someone that speaks English 24-7, basically, all right? With his co-workers, with my co-workers, with my students, with my classmates, with everyone. So you notice that at the end of the day, the object is submitted. Así que se van a fijar que al final del día, el objeto la mayoría de veces es omitido. All right? Por eso tenemos que tener bien claro de qué estamos hablando. Do you have any questions or is it clear? Comentarios, dudas y preguntas ahorita los pueden hacer porque quiero que esto quede really covered. Um, mm -hmm. but, but um, when I write um, um, a letter, for example, I can I, I I use that the nouns. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you can. Because the other because the other person no 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 see that the nouns. Exactly. Yes. For example, in different occasion, I I I I read the the novels, uh, in the newspaper and the news, that omit that uh, is the person read the. The magazine, for example, omit a cut because that in the context suppose that none is included. Yeah. Yeah, yes. But at, when I talk about with other persons, it's omitted that the nums. Yes, yeah? you can omit it. Yes, that's correct, Mr. Baye. Thank you so much for okay. pointing that out. All right. Remember that in English is the same as in Spanish. We have informal speaking. Informal speaking. We also have informal writing, informal writing, right? Mismo que en español tenemos, eh, somos hablantes formales o hablantes informales, right? Eh, lo mismo con la escritura. A veces hacemos, omitimos letras, right? Si escribimos por qué, no escribimos P-O-R-Q-U-E. Utilizamos X-Q. Right? ¿Por qué? Entonces omitimos cosas. A eso se le llama el lenguaje informal. Right? Write informal writing. Lo mismo sucede en inglés. Lo que el señor Valle estaba destacando is really important. When you are writing a letter, or you are writing a newspaper headline, or you are writing an essay, which is highly important. Estamos escribiendo para un periódico, o estamos escribiendo una carta para alguien que conocemos. O... Oh, o estamos escribiendo un ensayo, right? tenemos que ser bien cuidadosos de dar a entender cuál es el object del que estamos hablando, o los objects del que estamos hablando, porque la persona no lo puede ver. All right? Um, I might say, these books that you told me to read are perfect. Right? Estos libros que tú me dijiste que leyeras son perfectos. Books, right? that's my object. Pero tengo que mencionárselo a la persona porque si yo le digo, these ones that you told me to read are perfect, no va a saber. So, something clear to point out. Thank you so much. Now, let me ask. Ahora yo pregunto porque ya hablé bastante. Jensi eh, aportó algo muy interesante that you might know. Ahora quiero ver si los demás están, están comprendiendo este punto. So, Mr. Batres, Deras, tell me. What are the two options that I have when using possessive pronouns? ¿Cuáles son las dos opciones que yo tengo al utilizar possessive pronouns? Se utiliza en la uh -huh. segunda. In English. Uh, I don't know. Se me va a dar algo, señor. Whenever the object is at the beginning of the sentences or no mention at all. That's perfect. Thank you. Eso es correcto. Eh, para hacerlo más clever, más sencillo para ustedes, when someone asks, what are the two main positions that we can have with possessive pronouns? ¿Cuáles son las dos posiciones que le podemos dar a los possessive pronouns? ¿O cuáles son los dos usos que se le pueden dar al possessive pronoun? Well, you can use it at the beginning of the sentence or you can omit it if you want. 
Así de simple, ya en nuestro lenguaje informal. You can use it at the beginning of the sentence or you just omit it. Simple as that. Now, uh, do you have this information in your notebook? ¿Ya tiene esta información en el cuaderno? Raise your virtual hand if you don't want to open the microphone. Please raise your virtual hand if you already finished taking notes. Okay, Evelyn finished, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna give you one more minute, everyone to finish this on your notebooks. Tomorrow I'm gonna ask you, hey, what are possessive pronouns used for? Okay, I think, I believe that you must have finished already. Great, thank you, Lisette, for taking the time to answer. Now, let's check if you really understood the topic, my dear students. Possessive pronouns. And let me listen to Jensi. Can you help me with the instructions? Read. Okay, possessive pronouns. Read the sentences. And here is the correct possessive pronoun to fill in the blank. Right, yes, to choose. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Bay. All right, there you go, everyone. We have the sentences. In here, we only have three. Aquí solo tenemos tres. Las demás están acá. All right, so let's work on this ones. I'm going to give you some minutes. Cuando ustedes finalicen con esta, levanten la manita virtual automáticamente. All right. No voy a estar preguntando, ustedes solo la levantan, yo la voy a ver. Y cuando ya hayan unas cuatro o cinco personas que la hayan levantado, déjenla ahí, no solo la levanten, déjenla ahí. Voy a pasar a la siguiente slide. Ok. So here we go.
Okay, so far only Danny has finished with these three sentences. Do we have another person? Okay, now we have two, Manuel, great. One more and we, yes, perfect. Thank you, Lisa. Now, let's move on to the next one. You can go down with your hands, thank you. You can lower your hand. Let's go with number four, five, six, and seven.
Okay, then again, do we have someone else who has finished these sentences? Because so far, only Daniel has raised his hand. And I don't think four sentences is taking you too long. All right, excellent, Manuel. Thank you. Gen Z, perfect. All right, so let's may start now. Let's go over here. So let's check number one, Danny. Can you give me the answer? Read the whole sentences, both. Number one. Your microphone, Danny. My aunt, my aunt Lucy has a red car. The red car is theirs. All right, thank you, Danny. Let's analyze. No apague su micrófono. De, de quién estamos hablando ahí en, en la sentence? En la primera uh, ocasión. De mi tía Lucy. Ajá, exactly. ¿Y cuál cree que le aplica? Usted dijo theirs. Sí, es suya. Right. Ok, sí. perfect. Eh, pero como Lucy es una mujer, hay un possessive pronoun que se ah. le puede aplicar directamente a ella. Hers. That's correct. Thank you. So the correct one is the red car is hers. Thank you, Dani. Perfect. Let's go with Manuel Hernandez, number two. Bo has a small puppy. It is his puppy. Yes, that's correct. It is his puppy. 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 <laughs> All right, puppy. 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 <laughs> yes, excellent. Thank you. Se me apagó el cerebro un ratito. I'm sorry. Okay, very good. Thank you, Manuel. That's correct. Here's Poppy. Um, Gen Z, number three, please. John and I live in a big house. The house is theirs. All right. Veamos, Gen Z. Usted está involucrado en esta oración porque dice John and I. Uh, ours. Yes. Perfect. The, pass the house is ours. That's correct. Yes, yeah, yes. Perfect. Let's go with Evelyn Flores, number four. Peter and Wendy. Evelyn, are you there? Peter? I'm sorry. Hi. <laughs> go ahead. Continue. Peter and Wendy. We have pretty flowers. Flowers to make it smell nice. All right. Eh, tenemos una interferencia allí. Eh, Evelyn, sorry. All right. No se le entendió muy bien la respuesta. Vamos a pedirle a William Castro. What you got, okay. William? Peter and Wendy have pretty flowers. The flowers are theirs. That's correct. Thank you. All right. So let's check. Number five. Uh, just as a, re as a reminder, ¿por qué utilizamos theirs in number four? Because we are talking about Peter and Wendy. We are not involved in the sentence. Nosotros no estamos involucrados en la oración. Contrario a la anterior que teníamos, ¿verdad? Donde decía John and I. Ahí sí estamos involucrados. Let's go with Miguel Ángel, number five. Okay, let's go with Lizeth Rodríguez, number five. I am... I I am I am making a snowman. The snowman is mine. Yes, that's correct. The snowman is mine. Thank you. Let's go with Jackie number six. You have you you. Yeah. You have lots of present, the present are you? Yes, solo que la palabra es present. Present. Yes. Sorry. 
don't worry. Thank you so much. The presents are yours. That's correct. Eh, Carlos Salvador, number seven. The kitten. The kitten has a new toy. This is its toy? Yes, that's correct. Kitten is la cría de un gato normal, right? So that's what we call gatito in, in Spanish. Kitten. Very good. Thank you, everyone. That was a great practice. I feel that you were able to handle. Solo hubieron ahí unas dos confusiones, pero no es nada que, que no hayan corregido ustedes mismos en el momento, right? So let's check. Uh, let me just go down in here. Okay, practice time. Let me listen to Kevin Alexander. Please read the instructions. Number one, two, and three. One, word individuality. Two, create two sentences using process adjectives. Eh, la tercera no la veo. Three, all right. Mm, really? Okay, don't mm -hmm. worry. Thank ah. you. Thank you, Kevin. I'm going to read it. Yo la voy a leer, right? Then create two sentences using possessive pronouns. So, thank you, uh, Mr. Batres. All right. Two using possessive adjectives, two using possessive pronouns. Let's work on it. Trabajemos en eso, please.
Okay, meanwhile you are working, I'm going to check the attendance list, all right? En lo que, usted, en lo que ustedes están trabajando, yo voy a chequear la lista de asistencia. Okay, Beatriz Adriana Mejía, she's not in here. Carlos Salvador Velázquez Medrano. Present. Evelyn Mercedes Flores. Fred Franco. Present. Jacqueline Beatriz Meléndez. Present. José David Rosales. Turn off your microphones. Apaguen sus micrófonos, please. Josué David Rosales. José David Rosales, perdón. José Mario Molina. I am here. Karen Osorio Martínez. Kevin Alexander Batres. Present. Kevin Antonio Chicas. Kevin Daniel Rivera. Present. Kevin Ernesto García. Luis Alfonso Rivas. Manuel Antonio Hernández. Present. Manuel de Jesús Campos. I'm here. Marlene Elizabeth Rodríguez. Present. Miguel Galán Cantón. Present. Sandra Beatriz Ávalos Ramírez. William Alexander Castro Figueroa. Present. Jensi Asensio Valle. In person. Thank you. Perfect, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Let me go. One, two, three, four, five. We have a lot of missings. All right. Well, anyways, let's get started with this. You might have finished. I think so. All right. Yes. Kevin says finished. Now, uh, let me listen to Kevin Alexander. Let me listen to your examples, please. Positive adjectives. These are your shoes. This is your pencil. Positive pronouns. This is short. These shorts are yours. This book is yours. Yes, perfect, excellent. Thank you. That's correct. Thanks, Kevin. Now let's go with another one. Do we have another one who has finished? Another volunteer. Perfect, Mr. Campos. Possessive, possessive adjective. These are your suits. Mm -hmm. This is your cup. Mm -hmm. Possessive pronouns. These, these gloves are his. This mousepad is yours. Bravo, excellent. Thank you, Manuel. That's correct. Oh, by the way, Por cierto, podían utilizar el vocabulario que, que aprendieron ayer, all right? Eh, de, de clothes, right? Clothes for leisure, clothes for work. Another one, somebody else? Evelyn, great Evelyn action. Hey. Oh. Okay. These are your glasses. 
This is her puppy. Okay. Please give me my book. I want to read now. Urban. I'm sorry. Urban looking vintage. It composes in pronouns. Please give me my book. Ah, this book is mine. Yes, this book is mine. Uh huh. And uh, this is our bank looking vintage. Pero esa es possessive adjective. Our band. Okay. Fuera diferente porque era the band that is looking no sé qué me es agua. Tiene bastante looking the dash. Looking the dash, all right. The band that is looking the dash is ours. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. So you're welcome. Let's go with Mr. Rivera. Action. Uh, possessive adjectives. This, this are your gloves. Uh, that car is yours. Um, possessive pronouns. I buy in the new. Se le apagó el micrófono, Kevin. Para los possessive pronouns. Uh, okay. Uh, I have a small car. The expensive one is not mine. ¿Y la otra? Um, Porque esa que me dio son dos ideas en una, pero solo la última tiene el possessive pronoun. Okay. I need another uh, one. Necesito otra. Uh, my, my brother and I uh, have a, a new house. The new house is ours. Perfect. Thank you. That's correct. Thanks, Danny. All right. Recuerden que las oraciones pueden tener contexto así como ha hecho Danny. All right. Danny primero presentó el contexto para luego utilizar el possessive pronoun. Lo hizo basado como en los examples que teníamos, que trabajaron ustedes mismos. And that's great. Y eso es bueno. La mayoría de veces tenemos que explicar el contexto para que la gente nos pueda comprender. Thank you, Danny. Let's go with another one. Do we have more people? Me. Perfect, William. Let me, uh, let me listen to you. Our country is so beautiful. Yes, our country is so beautiful. Their suits are blue. Uh -huh. The chocolate is mine. The White House is not ours. Perfect. Excellent, William. Those are correct. Thank you. Somebody else? Somebody else? Alguien más? Ya pasó. Perfect, Mr. Manuel Hernandez. Action. Possessive agent. These are your pants. This is your umbrella. Possessive pronoun. My mother has a new bag. The new bag is hers. I have a motorcycle. Mo motor, motorcycle. ¿Cómo se dice? Moto motocicleta. Motorcycle. Motorcycle. The motorcycle is mine. Bravo. Excellent, Manuel. Also giving and providing context. Muy bien. Excelente. También nos dio y nos proveyó contexto. Somebody else? Alguien más? Uh -huh. What about the girls? Okay, perfectly said. Let me listen to you. Yeah. This is your pencil. This is pencil. It's your. Uh -huh. Yes, that's correct. Thank this you. Is, this is her, the tissue. This tissue is hers. All right. Yes. Perfect. Thank you, Lizette. Vaya, solo denme un segundito, Lizette, porque creo que le hace falta, pero mi computer se está descargando completamente y no quiero quedarme ya con minutos faltando. Ok, just give me one sec.
Okay, continue, Lizeth, because you only mentioned two, right? Uh, uh, ya dije los possessive adjectives uh, uh -huh. y los using possessive y pronouns. Uh -huh. uh, mm, this is your pencil. Possessive adjective. This is your pencil. Use possessive pronouns. Uh, this, this is pencil is yours. All right, excellent. Entonces uh -huh. hizo la misma, el mismo contexto para, para las dos. Yes. Tanto uh -huh. positive adjective como uh -huh. positive pronouns. Muy buen uh -huh. ejemplo, de hecho, right? Porque era algo que quería destacarles también, que podemos tomar el mismo context. Es muy sencillo tomar el mismo context y no se están retando a ustedes mismos, pero lo pueden hacer. All right, thank you, Lizette. Thank you so much for your effort. Okay, so let's keep pushing ourselves because you're doing very well. Sigámonos presionando, everyone, porque están haciendo muy bien hasta ahorita, all right? Your performance, su actuación en este, en este nivel, en este curso va muy bien. So far, it's perfect. Another one. Do I have another person? No one else? Okay. I imagine that the people that is not passing, maybe they don't have the examples or they are not connected, just their cell phones and their computers are in. Now, my dear students, I want to thank you for being here tonight. Please remember that tomorrow we have class. Quiero agradecerles por estar aquí ahora en la clase, right, esta noche. Y solo recordarles que mañana también tenemos clases. So you better be there. Así que los espero. Eh, recuerden que la clase de mañana es para cubrir la clase del día lunes que no se tuvo, right? Same is gonna happen for next week. Lo mismo va a suceder para la próxima semana. Vamos a tener Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday is a free day. Then Thursday and Friday. Okay? So thank you so much for coming. Sí. It was a pleasure Bye. to see you. What? All right. It was a pleasure to see you and see you tomorrow. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.